So this is that follow-up video I promised about the Rotary DeLorean. Um, I gotta say, all the crap I've taken for this car it makes it hardly worth having ever owned. Okay? Oh my goodness gracious. So, first one, why DeLorean, right? This poor vehicle was such a bad, a bad idea. Um, I, I had a, a Honda CRX, 1990 Honda CRX, and it wasn't even 10 years old, and this thing was rusted straight out. I was chasing rust around this car like it was going out of style. So, I was so sick of the rust. I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy a car that doesn't rust. So, not a lot of options. We have the Acura NSX, right? Which is mostly aluminum, right? And uh, I think Audi had the, uh, the A8, which I think was mostly aluminum, but that wasn't out yet. And the DeLorean, stainless steel body, uh, fiberglass underneath, nothing in net, right? This is <laughs> the best possible choice. So, I find this car for sale. They're not expensive. I mean, uh, you know, I guess now that I've actually appreciated value, but when I was buying, when I bought this thing, it was about $16,000 for a pretty well running vehicle, but I didn't have that type of money, nor was I going to spend it on, you know, that car. So I find this car, $8,000 painted in Florida, right? So I'm up in New England. I buy this thing. This was back in the early days when you couldn't like get stuff, uh, couldn't get stuff like tested or you know check via eBay and stuff so I buy this thing and uh, I had this thing shipped up to me and um, the day I received it, it caught on fire <laughs> so man uh, so um, yeah so it was painted black um, I don't I don't really mind the fact it's painted black I think it looked a little less 80s uh, because there's, there's obviously a stigma attached to this car with, you know, uh, Back to the Future and stuff. But, uh, it looked good in black, so, you know, I, I got this car, and, um, besides catching on fire, the engine was in really bad shape. Um, so I started, like, fixing the engine, fixing the door locks and the door regulators and the fuel tank and the fuel pump, and, uh, the frame and all this other stuff. And uh, even when the engine was running good, it was still like pretty much the worst possible car. And uh, so I get the great idea. I'm just going to change out the engine. Actually, here we go. This is actually it's kind of funny. So this is uh, this is the number one reason for changing the engine in a DeLorean, right here. Craft cars. Guess what's in here? Number 37, DeLorean DMC-12. Let's see if I can find something good here for you. <laughs> this, this writer has some interesting choice words to this vehicle. This is a good one. If this car was a real time machine, maybe the British government could go and get their money back. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, sure, the stainless body looked good, but at least until it got covered in fingerprints. But the build quality was appalling, and that 2.8 liter V6 was so weak, it would struggle to pull a hobo off your sister. <laughs> oh my God. So when this thing was brand new and running awesome, 130 horsepower, right? Oh, geez. So this thing, I don't know, <laughs> I had 100 horsepower. No pull whatsoever, right? You, and the thing is, it looks fast. So like everyone wants to race you, and you can just plant your foot and just pretend you're not racing because you wouldn't win no races. <laughs> Anyways, so I found this uh, list online that actually had um, hundreds and hundreds of different, different car engine combos and stuff like that. So I was looking for an engine that was very light because um, I wanted to take a lot of weight. I wanted to take weight out of the rear of this car because it was really, really weight rear bias, like 60 something, 65% rear, something like that, uh, weight bias. So um, I'm looking for light engines, high horsepower engines. <clears throat> I came up with a couple of good choices. Uh, the Honda S2000, 
uh, was, uh, you know, two liter, 240 horsepower. That was, that was pretty good for the time. And I also found the, um, the Mazda, uh, 13B, right. From the RX-7 it had like 255 horsepower in the, in the third gen RX-7. Um, so, and then I was like, well, you know, my, do I have to change out the transmission too? And, uh, the, uh, the Honda engine is super high revving. So didn't make a lot of sense because it didn't have any torque to, to put in this heavier vehicle. I get a lot of shit from the, uh, the vehicle too, of being really heavy. It's actually surprisingly not heavy. It's like 2,800 pounds. <clears throat> the, um, you know, it's not even, you know, they say it's heavy because it's stainless, but stainless is no heavier than steel. And actually the car was a fiberglass car. It's basically effectively like almost like a kit car. It had a very small chassis uh, that went straight up the middle in, in like a, uh, a Y or a wishbone configuration. And um, mostly, mostly fiberglass and then the body was stainless. So 2,800 pounds is lighter than like any average sedan. Um, so looking at the 13B uh, rotary engine, <clears throat> tried to find one very hard to come by because people like blowing these things up they tune them you know they're doing they blow them up so they're really hard to come by so i found the 20b uh, which was the three rotor equivalent of the same engine that was used only one car ever which was the 1990 1991 mazda unis cosmo so never was imported to the united states the only place you could get them was japan australia <clears throat> so I had this great idea, you know, if some rotors are good, are good more is better. <laughs> Got the 20B and, um, you know, started looking at the specs and stuff, this thing. I'm just like, you know, uh, I started talking to a guy that had a, uh, put a V8 in the in DeLorean. And he said around 300 horsepower, he just tore the transmission apart. Spent all this time and effort just rebuilding this transmission to make it work. So I decided I didn't want that problem. Started looking at different things that would work with this engine. Um, found a uh, Porsche about, about that same time period, had a rear engine car, right? The 911 had about 280, you know, horsepower. So I thought it'd be a really good, really good fit. So looking for a Porsche transaction, like the 915 or something like that, uh, five speed, can't find one anywhere. So ended up finding, um, six speed transmission. I'm like, Hey, something's good. More's better, right? Six speed transmission. So, uh, ended up getting one of those. You know, there's like five grand for that thing. So I'm just throwing money good after bad after, <laughs> on this thing. And uh, so I'm going to put this thing together. And you think about what I took, what came out. You know, I had the small V6, five-speed transmission, got rid of that thing, and um, got this three-rotor, which was a really long engine <clears throat> compared to the two-rotor, and the six-speed transmission, which was a lot longer than the five-speed transmission. And this thing, like did not fit inside this vehicle right so i'm like underneath the car i'm cutting off the frame parts and stuff like that putting in new motor mounts and stuff trying to get this thing to fit in here and uh and there's some of that that footage i'll, I'll show you some of that footage This was a ridiculous effort that made this vehicle uh, a lot faster. So the rotary engine was uh, supposed to have around 300 horsepower. <clears throat> it was completely stock. Um, except for the fact that when I got it, it, um, it was only the front half of the car that, they imp that I imported from, from Japan. So I have half a car now and you know, with the engine half, and uh stupid stupid amounts of effort trying to figure out like what you know how to take an engine out of a car basically completely reconfigure it and put in a completely different car that's way smaller so i started separating out you know uh the, the, the 20b out of the out of the mazda and um trying to figure out how to get it into the delorean and it actually ended up having like two different parts of the car one was like the the 20B section of the car, which had all the 20B electronics and stuff like that. And then I had the whole car section of the car, which was, you know, the lights and the dashboard and all that other stuff. 
So there was a DeLorean side that ran all the DeLorean stuff, and a Mazda side that ran all the Mazda stuff. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, this computer, this car was very, very highly integrated with electronics. It had GPS, uh, you know, any electronics, you know, all, all like, not, not super fancy stuff, but stuff that wasn't super common in a car that old. Um, there was um, uh, variable length exhaust, so like it had like some pneumatic switches or hydraulic switches that would swap over the exhaust to go from like one path to another path. This car was just crazy. So um, I had a severed wire harness. I went to the back of the car, and uh, I'm starting to look at all these wires and saying, okay, well these wires have to go to stuff in the back of the car, right? So what's in the back of the car? I guess there's lights. Um, you know, door door locks. Uh, what else is it going to be back there? Like um, some sort of sensor? I don't know. You know, I'm trying to think. What what's back there? The oxygen sensor, maybe. So I count how many wires are in this loom that's completely severed. Eighty four wires. So now I'm thinking, where do eighty four wires go to the back of this car? So I need the manual. There's no way I can just start guessing what these things are just figuring out where they go to because everything's written in Japanese, right? It's a Japanese car. So um, I'm thinking, well, it's important to Australia. Maybe the, the Aussies have something for me. So I call up some places that uh, have, um, that work on, that work on this car on, on Mazdas over in Australia. And um, they say, oh yeah, no, yeah, we told you, we had that manual, we converted it from Japanese over to English. But, you know, we just, we just, um, we just lost it. Uh, we had a we had a warehouse fire and we lost everything, so uh, tough luck, right? So I do some more digging. I find some. I find someone has a copy, like a horrible, a horribly bad, low resolution copy of the uh, Japanese electrical schematics. And um, I'll put up a picture. I'll take a high res high res scan of this of this uh, low res copy, so you can truly appreciate what I had to do to try to figure out where in the world all these freaking wires went. So after weeks and weeks and months of pulling wires out of the wiring harness, um, figuring out parts that I just did not need anymore, I took out all the systems, obviously the electrical system, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the lighting system and the, the brakes. And uh, I ended up keeping the dash, put the dash inside the uh, DeLorean. So that was kind of cool. Uh, but obviously I had to do some, some, uh, harness extension because the dash is a lot further in the DeLorean than it was in the than the, the Mazda. So yeah I took all these these uh, parts out of the Mazda basically reconfigured them. You can actually if you, if you look at this this picture I'll put a picture it shows the uh, you can see all the parts that are in the DeLorean and kind of where they were in the Mazda and the Mazda was just such a giant like you know uh, engine bay and the door was such a tiny engine bay i had to build like these new brackets and new like panels and stuff to put all these electronics on what a mess so uh yeah so it seemed like a good idea at the time and um it, this thing was you know stupid fast stupid fast so it was zero to 60 uh, four and a half you know seconds um the ferrari modena came out about the same time early 2000s right and this thing had the same zero to sixty as a Fry Modena, which I thought was pretty cool. The difference between the DeLorean and the Ferrari, which is like I don't know, a hundred thousand dollars more expensive, or maybe more, is that when you turn the steering wheel in the DeLorean, who knows what's gonna happen, right? <laughs> this thing had a suspension that was built for a hundred thirty horsepower car, and when you go like this, you don't even have to worry about much if you're not going that fast. But when you're going ridiculous like speed, ridiculous acceleration, the engine being right over the wheels gave this thing 100% takeoff, 0% burnout. This thing was stupid fast. But uh, suspension, complete garbage. Uh, this thing was dangerous, like just dangerous at speeds. Um, so I think I hit, I don't know, maybe 100 ever you know, miles per hour in this car, and it was... Um, it was probably the scariest thing I've ever experienced in a car before because this vehicle was not made to go fast. Like, this is like a cruiser. You know, they should have made it like a GT car because this was not a race car at all. And now it was a very fast, not race car. 
So, I don't know. I hope you're entertained by this uh, history of uh, the rotary DeLorean. Uh, I did sell this thing uh, several years ago, uh, but I keep in touch with the guy who I sold it to, and I guess he's pretty happy with it, so I'm fine with that. But, um, yep, that's it, I guess.